today. I'm being vulgar. All right, so I'm gonna hit this from the rear. Just like your mom. I get my own car lift. And the M3 finally sounds good. What good is the Hunter Hoffman back with his same content? In this video, we're making the M3 better. It's gonna be a long one, but you should definitely check out the end. The results are worth it. I also want to massively thank Twinbush for sponsoring the video. I'll put all their information in the description below, so go check them out. Now let's see what happened. Alright everyone, we're back on the M3. We got the car jacked up, so we're first gonna remove the wheel and then I'll address a few things. Let me show you what I mean. Alright, so what do we have? So this is our Orbit Grey N3 CS wheel. It's obviously a very good looking wheel, but what I don't like about the wheel is this badge. I hate the fact that it does this. It's not a Rolls Royce, it's a BMW. It should be oriented like so. Hence why I bought four ordinary badges to stick them in like this, so that we can get rid of these. Also note that these are slightly damaged. Not sure how you would be able to damage these like this, but there you go. And this is how they look from behind. Let's get these out of here and replace them with the good ones. Alright, so I'm gonna hit this from the rear. Just like your mom. And replace it with one of these. Then we first take off the sticker. Oh yeah. And now we make sure we get the orientation right. And there we go. The right orientation obviously being the M logo over here being perpendicular to the M over there. Let me know in the comments if you want to have these. I'll send them over. Alright, so the next thing I'd like to address are these spacers. I'm not a fan of them, I think they're a bit too much, so we're gonna remove the spacers altogether. The thing is though, I only have the extended wheel bolts, so I'm not sure if I'm able to reassemble everything with the extended wheel bolts, but we'll see what happens. Reminds me of my ring. Alright, so I put the car in neutral, now I'm gonna screw in the wheel bolt all the way to see if it hits the wheel bearing behind it. So it's now all the way in, let's carefully rotate the wheel to see if it hits the bearing. That seems to go well. Good. So we can use the extended wheel bolts. All right, so off camera, I went ahead and cleaned out the threads. Check out the video in the top right hand corner to see how to properly do so. So we're now gonna go ahead and pop on the wheel and repeat the process for the other wheels. All right, so off camera, I'm gonna go do the rest of the wheels, torque it all to spec. So let me show you some befores and afters, of which the afters are obviously OEM. F I like that. Here we go. Alright, so after having removed the spacers of the car, we're going to continue the theme of making the car look more subtle. And for that, I'm going to take you to the rear of the car, because, as you can see, the exhaust tips protrude quite much. I think it's a bit... What's the word that I'm looking for? I do think it's a bit too much, maybe. Also, maybe a bit too much, but... Maybe also a bit too much, but... But again, maybe, it's, maybe I do think it's a bit much. Yeah, maybe a bit too much. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove these, give them a quick clean, and have them placed more inwards to the car, creating that more subtle look. If you wanna see how that process goes, check out the video in the top right-hand corner. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. All right, so with an Allen key three, we're gonna remove these tips. All right, so then with a bit of brake cleaner, we're going to clean these tips as well as the exhaust pipes. Just the tip. Oh, whoa. There's actually loads of pebbles in here. Not sure if you can see this. There you go. Ah! Shit. Okay. Whoopsie. All right, so now that the pipes and tips are clean, we're going to look for a proper protrusion of the tips. All 
All right, so I'm gonna fine tune this and use a tape measure off camera and show you the befores and afters. I think this is way more subtle than it used to be. And as you can see, I got the alignment pretty damn right. So yeah, I'm happy with the results. All right, so on to the next thing. All right, so the next thing we're going to address is the handbrake. Over the years and miles, the handbrake has become quite loose. Let me show you what I mean, and let's count the total amount of clicks. So that's 11 clicks. That's way too loose. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the handbrake so that it becomes tight again. I mean, everybody prefers tight over loose, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to remove this cover, put the handbrake cable in service mode, jack up the car and take off the wheels, then manually adjust the handbrake adjusters, and to top it all off, we're going to replace the handbrake lever with a new one. This one is a bit worn. So if all goes according to plan, we're going from loose and worn to tight and fresh. Mmm, tight and fresh. So let's get it done. All right, so the first step would be to remove this piece of trim. With a plastic tool, simply pop it off like so, and then pull the trim off. As you can then see, there is a spring located below the handbrake lever. With a long flat screwdriver, we're going to push in this spring while the handbrake lever is in its resting position. So as you can see, the spring is now being held in by this retainer clip, meaning that it's in service mode. So the next step would be to remove the rear wheels. Note that this step isn't strictly necessary, but for illustration purposes, I'll remove the wheel anyway, so that you can see how it works. All right, so after having put the car into neutral and removing the wheel, let me show you where the manual adjusters for the handbrake are located. For the driver's side, the adjuster is located at around three o'clock. So with a long flat screwdriver, we're going to tighten the handbrake assembly again. By turning the adjuster outwards, we open up the handbrake assembly, making it tighter. Once the rotor won't spin anymore, turn it inwards again, exactly until it spins freely without any drag. Then it's a matter of putting back on the wheel and do the same on the other side. As you can see here, it only takes the removal of one wheel bolt to get to the adjuster. I wrap my screwdriver with tape so to not damage my wheel accidentally. So once the handbrake is adjusted, I thought it would be fitting to renew the handbrake lever as the one in the car was a bit shiny and worn. So interestingly enough, the handbrake cover is attached to the handbrake lever with a tie wrap. Apparently BMW assembles these bad boys like this. So with a Stanley knife, we're going to carefully remove the tie wrap. Then we insert the new handbrake lever, wrap a tie wrap around it, and cut it with these pliers. You remember these pliers, by the way? These cutting pliers? Not mine. The thieves left it in the car. I'm keeping that. Well, at least they're useful to me now. Anyway, after cutting the tie wrap, I find out that I oriented the tie wrap the wrong way around. So off camera, I went ahead and redid the tie wrap, this time in the correct orientation, as you can see. Now let's put this back in the car. Before doing so, however, we would first need to release the spring out of the service position by flicking this clip to the left, releasing the spring. There we go. So now we reinstall the trim by simply sliding the lever back on and popping back in the trim. So after reinstalling the handbrake trim, I went ahead and checked how tight the handbrake now feels. And I only got up to six clicks, which is a huge improvement and makes the car feel a lot newer again. Happy with the results and on to the next thing. So to add a little theft protection, I will install this dummy OBD2 port. As you know, the OBD2 port is located over here and enables thieves to turn on your ignition, disarming the alarm. So after removing the footwell panel and connecting the live port of the cable to my adapter and the cable to the real OBD2 port, I made sure to tightly package it, like so. Then it was a matter of hiding it away and securing it on the frame of the dashboard before buttoning everything up again. And there we go, our fake OBD2 port. Okay, so this place needs no introduction as you've all seen the videos of my classic mini. Oh, 
<laughs> okay, well, as some of you might not know, I have private access to this place. So what I envisioned a long time ago is installing a car lift in here. So when constructing this place, we made sure that the concrete floor was able to support a car lift. As it's a rather small place, there are few options to choose from. But in the end, I opted for a car lift from Twinbush. Twinbush were kind enough to sponsor the channel, so a huge shout out to them and for the great service they provided. So after getting the lift and the parts in the shed, these guys went on to professionally install the car lift. So they made sure the lift was properly assembled, they got the wiring done, they got the hydraulics done, they made sure it's properly anchored to the floor, and of course having the car lift perfectly level. Really happy with the job they did, and here it is ready for use. As you can see, it's easily able to lift up the M3. Not sure if it's able to lift up your mom. So the M3 was parked over here. It took quite some effort to get it over here. With some help of some wooden planks, we were finally able to get it up on the lift. Look at all the room for activities. Okay, so what are we gonna do first? These are OEM downpipes. These bad boys came of this crispy M3. Hence why I got to buy them for a good price. The downpipes have only done 55,000 miles. All right, so we're first gonna start on top of the car. We start out by removing these plastic clips, which went well. Alright, so after removing these plastic clips, we turn these plastic screws a quarter turn counterclockwise. Then we remove these black panels. Afterwards, we're going to undo the 13mm bolts holding down the carbon brace. Don't forget this 10mm bolt attached to the coolant reservoir before removing the carbon brace altogether. Next up, we pop off this beauty cover, remove the MAF sensor, and get the cable out of the way. Then with a 6mm swivel socket, we loosen the hose clamp connecting the air filter to the inlet. Then the air filter simply pops out. And here's a look at the hose clamp. So after covering up the inlet, we loosen the charge pipes, starting out with the one in the front. All right, so after we're done stuffing all the holes, that's what she said. <laughs> we remove this plastic cover. Mm -hmm. 
Then we remove the O2 sensors, first out of their brackets, and then by pulling the gray lever and disconnecting them. I noted that the O2 sensor was routed incorrectly. There was a tie wrap holding it down, which I removed. And as you can see, the O2 sensor was supposed to be routed through this clip, which it was not. So now that we're done with the top of the engine, it's time to put the car in the air and continue with the bottom. Alright, so after removing this kit plate, I noticed something weird. There are no apparent oil leaks on this car. Is it even a BMW? Alright, so these are the loud catalyst downpipes that we're going to remove. As you can see, I've already drenched the bolts in WD-40. So let's go ahead and remove these bolts. Alright, so after thankfully not snapping any of the bolts, we continue by removing the rest of the exhaust. First we remove the F-brace of the exhaust, then we disconnect the connectors of the exhaust flaps, and continue by removing all the hangers of the exhaust. Alright, so the next step is to remove this flange. To do so, we have to remove this crusty bolt. So now watch me remove it without any issues. Oh. <laughs> yeah, not ideal. Alright, so after removing the donut gaskets and the flange, we're now going to undo the V-band clamp and the O2 sensors. Alright, so after removing both downpipes, here's a look at the turbos. As you can see, there aren't any leaks, and I've checked the turbines for any axial or radial play. There isn't any, which is good. So after putting back in the V-band clamp, and the bolt holding the clamp down, we install the stock downpipes with the O2 sensors obviously installed from the previous downpipes. 
I spun the wires of the secondary O2 sensor in a way that they are completely straight and untangled when screwed back in the stock downpipes. Then I reinstalled the brackets supporting the downpipe and continued with fastening the V-band clamp. Here you can see the V-band clamp tightly screwed in. Now it's time for the other downpipe. Alright, so after tightening down the O2 sensor and the V-band clamp, we reinstall the cleaned up flanges, a new bolt, and the donut gaskets of the stock downpipes which were still in great shape. So now it's time to reinstall the exhaust. Before I did so however, I gave all the hardware a quick go with the wire wheel. That looks much better. Then with the help of my dear mom and the dogs, we reinstalled the exhaust. So there we have it, everything torqued to spec and the stock downpipes installed. Then I also gave the skid plate a quick clean. Before installing it on the car and finishing up all the work from the bottom. Then it was a matter of routing the O2 sensors, correctly this time, and buttoning everything up again. Alright, so that was it. It was quite the job, but we got it done in the end. It's already dark outside, so we can't do any crazy revs, but here's how the car now sounds. Mm-hmm.
All right, so there we have it. Lots of OEM improvements on the car. God, I love original parts. Next time, we're installing aftermarket parts. <laughs> what? So please consider subscribing if you made it this far. A lot of work went into this video. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time. All right, so, all right, so off camera, I'm gonna go, all right, so off camera, uh, toy. All right, so off camera, I'm gonna go do, all right, so off camera, I'm gonna go do the rest of the wheels. Mm. All right, so off camera. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove these, give them a, so what I'm gonna do is go, so what I'm gonna do is go, so what I'm gonna do is go, yes, <laughs> A hole. All right, so now that the pipes and tips are clean, we're going to look for a proper protrude. We're going to look for a proper protrude. We're going to look for it. We're going to look for a proper protrusion of the tips. We're going to look for a proper protrude. We're going to look for a proper protrusion of the tips. We're going to look for a proper. We're going to look. All right, so then with a bit of brake. Uh, okay. All right, so then with a bit of brake cleaner, we're going to. All right, so then with a bit of brake cleaner. Right.